And here you have it. One of my subscribers was able to remove a charge off from their credit report by using this method. If you looked at your credit report lately and you have either one or multiple charge offs on your credit report, you've been searching TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, trying to get them removed and everything is not working, you don't know what to do, then don't worry, I got you. In today's lesson, I'm gonna be giving you a full guide and a strategy on how you can remove these charge offs step by step. This is gonna be a really good one. So go ahead, go get your pen and paper. I promise you I'll rate right here. And without further ado, let's dive in. All right, ladies and gents. So again, this is going to be a full in-depth breakdown on how you can remove these charge offs from your credit report. So before we get started, I just wanna ask if you don't mind hitting that like button for me. It truly helps my channel out a lot. I'm really trying to help you and everybody else that have charge offs get them removed from their credit report. Now, enough of me rambling, let's get into the actual guide itself. All right, ladies and gents, I just wanna let you know up front, please understand that this is going to be a process. This isn't gonna be a two day hack, 24 hour hack. This is nothing of the sort. This is actually you setting up the credit bureau so you can actually deal with them the correct way to get things removed off of your credit report by your legal rights, all right? So again, this is going to be a process. It will start off with you sending out letters to the credit bureau. I'm trying to to, you know, let you know now, you know, up front, this is going to start off with you on your behalf, sending things to the credit bureau and actually setting them up. This is what the strategy is all about. And again, I just want to give you the education within the actual video itself. So you know how to confront this and God forbid, if this ever happens to you again, you will know how to move accordingly. Okay. But I just wanted to let you know that this is the first section, but let's actually get into the actual steps itself and get into how we can actually remove everything. All right. So let's get to the computer. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So before we actually get started with everything, as you can see right here, I do have a credit report set up. That is the first thing that you are going to need. All right. I don't expect you to go to Credit uh, Karma or anything like that to actually get what's going on in your credit file. I need you to have the legit information. Credit Karma always doesn't show everything, all right? So you can get your actual credit report from three actual sources. You can either get it from Identity IQ, which you're looking at right here. You can get it from MyFreeScoreNow.com. Both of those links will be in the description if you want to get your credit report. Or you can get it from for free at AnnualCreditReport.com. I do this every single video and I always forget to fact check it. I think you can get one free credit report a year if you haven't utilized that already you can do that as well fact check me i hope it is true but yeah those are the three credible places all right so let's go ahead and get started so right here we do have a capital one uh account right here on our actual file the things that you want to look for to make sure that you are in the correct uh space is of course you see account status it says derogatory right here in the payment status it says collection slash charge off of course i.e charge offs as well collection and charge offs work hand in hand they're pretty much almost the same thing almost um even in the comments it says charged off as bad credit canceled by credit grantor so that's how you know for sure it is a charge off all right so with the information right here you even see right here experian is actually show co charge off charge off all the way around from 21 all the way to 23 all right but this is what you want to do when it comes to actually getting inaccuracies on your credit report to actually fight this. In the first actual letter itself, you're going to actually ask the credit bureaus to do an investigation. And with this investigation, it's basically you putting the credit bureaus on notice, letting them know, hey, I'm looking at my credit file. I understand this is a charge off, but I don't see the total accuracy in everything that you're referring to on my credit report. And because of consumer law, everything is supposed to be 100% accurate, which it's not. So we're going to be using information. And trust me, in all of these letters, it's going to be super simple. It's not going to be anything super high end. And I'm going to show you that as well. So even with inaccuracies, we see right here, date last reported, 9-19-23, 10-17-23, 9 -1 -23. That's an inaccuracy in itself. And even with the date last active, 11 18 19, 11, 01, 601. If all three of these people get the same amount or the same information, I don't understand why everything has to be inaccurate. It shouldn't be that way. It's too easy. Even the date open, 21, 11, it's not the same. Even the actual limits, 45, 
445, 0, the list goes on and on. And the last thing I want to show you is even TransUnion, Experian, and Equifax are still showing inaccurate information. If this is a charge off, which Experian is actually reporting, why is Equifax actually showing that it's actually okay in these actual months itself? And then some months they don't even post at all. TransUnion haven't showed anything. True enough, certain lenders do actually, if it's actually a charge off, they'll sometimes stop reporting, but that's an inaccuracy. It has to actually be reported. See what I'm saying? So this is all the information that you actually want to look for when you're looking on your credit report. You want to look for these inaccuracies on these charge offs. And I promise you, 98% of you, all of y'all have some type of inaccuracy. So when you see this information, you're going to gather up all of the information from each account that you have, whether it's Capital One, for the example itself, whatever actual accounts you have, right? And you want to make sure that you have this account number. Don't worry about the asterisk. It's all right. Trust me. So when you get all that information, you want to configure some type of letter. And let me show you what type of letter that you would need. So this is pretty much going to be round one. To whom it may concern, the inaccurate information pertains to a charge off that appears on my credit report. According to the information provided, this charge off does not belong to me, and I believe it has been mistakenly reported. The specific details of the charge off that I dispute are, this is where you're going to put the creditor's name, which is, of course, Capital One. Then after that, you're going to go to account number. Again, account number. Then you're going to go to date last charge off. Always go with the uh, earliest uh, date. So if it states the date of charge off, so we're going to go right here. Last reported, 919. So we're going to go 901. And then we're going to go amount. And with that information right here, we're going to go for the actual 395. All right. We're going to put that right there. And then we're just going to put basic information right here. I request a thorough investigation into this matter under the Fair Credit Reporting Act. Please verify the accuracy of the information with the original credit providing me with the findings of your investigation. I am also requesting that any inaccurate or unverifiable information be corrected or removed from my credit report promptly. All right, ladies and gents. So you can continue to keep reading this. If you want to actually take a screenshot, you can. But this is the actual letter that you're actually going to send them. It's just strictly to the point. You're just asking for an investigation. Even though I put in here, this does not belong to me, it's because it's up to the credit bureaus to actually prove that. And nine times out of 10, because everything has been sold to other debts, debtors and things of that nature, they cannot. So it's just them putting them on their toes, telling them, hey, this is not supposed to be there. But nine times out of 10, they are going to come back stating that it is verified, but that's okay. That's what we want, okay? But before we get going, ladies and gents, I just wanted to show you this actual chart that I found on the internet that I thought that would be super beneficial for you. Um, it's basically showing the charge off rates in four simple steps. So with the information right here, it's showing right here like, so step one, charge offs can stay on your credit report up to seven years. Seven years of bad credit. You don't want that. And then right here it shows, you know, a high charge off, high charge off rate can indicate the to lenders that you are a risky borrower. This is why you should not have any type of inaccuracies on your credit report. I know there are people telling you out there like, hey, you know, if you have a late payment or a charge off and it's three years old, five years old, it doesn't matter. You can still get funding or you can still get whatever you want. Please understand this, ladies and gents. These lenders look at your whole credit report. Why in the world would they give you something if they see something negative on there? Like, they are the main people that hold on to the past. They try to use any type of reason to deny you, especially in the times that we're in now. So all these people that are telling you that it's okay to have things on your credit report, even though you can't get it off from five years ago and think you have to get that off before you apply for anything. And even right here when it says when it comes to the credit, when it comes to credit cards specifically, a char high charge off rate can lead to a decrease in your credit limit or even account closures. Yes, when these lenders do soft pulls to see how you're doing on your credit file, they can actually slash your limits or close the accounts because, again, back to number two, risky. And number four, it shows right here, it's important to note that not all types of debt can be charged off. This is kind of generic, but again, it's pretty it's pretty self-explanatory but i just wanted to show you this information right here but right here and also i just wanted to show you you know just the basic information in case you you know it's first time uh, seeing me on youtube you know 
just showing you the actual consumer law that's showing, you know, whenever a consumer report agent prepares your consumer report, it follows reasonable procedure to assure maximum possible accuracy of the information concerning the individual whom the report relates. Does this look like it's accurate? It's not accurate under any circumstances, none whatsoever. See what I'm saying? We have so much leverage right here. But again, they're still going to state that it's verified. So when it does become verified and you get that letter, what I want you to do is save that because it's going to come in handy later on. Save the actual copy of all the letters that you send and their responses. And this is going to be actually round two. So when you send that information stating that they said it was verified, this is what you're going to send to them. I'm writing you in response to your recent communication regarding the investigation of the disputed charge of information on my credit report. And again, take a screenshot of this. I appreciate your efforts thus far. However, I have not received sufficient information regarding how the information was verified. And then it gives you, you know, 15 U.S.C. 1681 I.A. I am entitled to a reinvestigation. Kindly request that you initiate the reinvestigation into the dispute charge off as follows. Again, same thing just like up there. Creditor's name, account number. Even if you have multiples, you can just put multiples. Account number, date of charge off, the amount, etc. And then you could just read this. Again, take a screenshot of this and you can send this to them. Again, like it says right here. When it comes to 15 U.S.C. 1681-I, they're only allowed 15 days to actually do the reinvestigation and actually get back to you. But, of course, they are not. And just to prove it to you, 15 U.S.C. 1681-I, it shows right here. So, as you can see right here, except as provided subparagraph, the 30-day described subparagraph may be extended for not more than 15 additional days. We put that in there within 15 days receiving that request. Therefore, I expect you to receive your response no later than 15 days later. So you're letting them know, hey, I am a, I am a consumer, but I know my rights. So please do this. So with all that information right there, when you send that information, whether they send you back a response or not, you're going to take it to their supreme rulers, the people that rule over them. So this is where you're actually going to get to who? The CFPB. You're going to go to the CFPB right here, right? If you've never used them, these are the people that are over the actual credit bureaus themselves. This is at the actual credit bureau. Experian, TransUnion, Equifax are just the overseers. You know, that's just like the front, the face of it. And also, I forgot to state one more thing as well. When you send these letters off, ladies and gents, please understand me. Send it off certified mail. The reason why I want you to send it off certified mail is because you're going to get a green slip. The green slip in indicates when the actual letters are going to get to its destination. So it shows right there that you actually attempted to actually talk to the credit bureaus to get everything situated. And these 15 days are not correlating, 35 days, whatever it is. So you're going to have their responses your responses, your initial letters, and the green slip. You have a multitude of proof and your credit report, all right? I just want to throw that in there before we get into the complaint, before you start writing things. But when you do all that, you have all the information, let's get back to this actual CFPB. All right, so when you get right here to what is actually complaining about, the first thing that you're going to click on is, of course, credit reporting and other uh, personal consumer goods. So you're going to click that, and then right down here is going to ask, what type of credit reporting product? course credit reporting and you're going to click next all right so right here it's going to ask you what type of problem are you having so right here you, you can go ahead and click on problem with companies investigation into existing problem so you're going to click that some more things are going to pop up so right here when it asks to best describe your problem you're going to put their investigation to not fix the error on your credit report all right so when you get right here, have you tried to fix this problem with the, with the company? You're going to click yes. Did you request information from the company? Yes, you did. I'm going to click next. What actually happened? This is the actual meat and potatoes of the actual complaint itself. This is where you're going to explain that you actually reached out to the credit bureaus to try to get everything resolved and nothing happened on your favor. And you have everything to actually prove it. So I'm going to give you something very simple to put in here. 
Um, you don't have to hit them with a lot, a lot of law jargon or anything. You just basically explain as a consumer, all right? So, so right here, you're going to state, again, just, you know, basic information. This account, or if you have multiple accounts, these accounts were charged off earlier this year. Since then, the date of the last activity have been inconsistently updated on Credit Bureau 1, whoever it is, TransUnion, whatever you want to put. The date last active is listed month and year. While on Credit Bureau 2, whoever it is, you know, Experian, Equifax, whatever, show it shows month and year. If the information is sourced from the original creditors, these dates should be consistent. Due to these discrepancies, the accuracy on these accounts cannot be guaranteed and they are deemed inaccurate. So you're basically let them know again that, hey, I did all my due diligence, but this is still inaccurate. And I try to reach out to them to try to get everything resolved. So this is you basically telling them what happened. So after you finish that, again, take a screenshot if you want. They're going to ask you, do you want to publish this? I don't expect for you to publish this. It's not necessary. Don't do it. What would be the fair resolution for this? Please update and delete accounts from our credit report. Thank you. Always thank the credit uh, CFPB. All right, so right here is a very, very important step, the, the attach of the documents. Everything that I told you about from the green slip to the inaccurate credit report, the letters that you sent off, the responses that you got, you are going to put all of that information right here. It should be more than actually three files that you actually submit in, all right? So that's all the information. So you're actually showing all of the information that you're stating right here all the information that you're asking to remove, those actual documents are going to actually cut it for them and say, okay, we actually need to remove this. All right. So the next step, when you do all that, you're going to click next. Now, when you get right here, again, ladies and gents, I want to let you know, you are going to repeat this process two more times. You are going to have three cases in total. Why? For all three credit bureaus. Okay. So when you get to this point, you're only going to put one, all right? So you could put Experian, all right? A few of them are going to pop up. You could put Experian Consumer Fraud. I, I expect you to put uh, Experian Credit Bureaus. You could put that. You're going to put Social Security Number, Name as Appears on Credit Report, Date of Birth. So whatever that is, whatever this is, and Name as It Appears. All right. It's going to ask, do you want to complain about another company? <clears throat> You're going to say no. All right. Because why? You're going to rinse and repeat this again for who? TransUnion, then Equifax. All right. So everything that you have, make sure that you save it because you're going to be doing this again for those actual credit bureaus themselves. I know in the past, if you see my other videos, I actually, I actually did all three of them on the same one. I figured that it might be a little more effective if you actually do these one by one by one. When you click next, it's basically just going to give you a rundown of everything that you just enlisted on. So your name, address, make sure everything is actually accurate. Email address, make sure that you give them an actual accurate email address because that is how you're going to stay in contact with them. You are going to hear from them in about 10 days, maybe less than that, maybe 12, 13 days, something of that nature. So with all that information being said, they will be asking you more questions and more, and they might even ask for more uh, documentation, which you will already have. But this is the way on how you can get things removed from your credit report. Now, is this 100% accurate? No, I'm not saying that. Will you have to do this multiple times? You might have to, I'm telling you. But this is in a very effective way on how you can get actual charge offs removed from your credit report, all right? Now, again, if you still have any issues or trouble with this and you still can't get them off, this is where I will actually plug myself in. I have a credit restoration program where I'm helping people remove negatives off their credit report. I'm not using the CFPB. I can't do this against the law, but I have my own special tactics where I'm getting actual super awesome results on all of my clients and subscribers that are getting things removed from their credit report. If that's something that you're interested in, click the link in my bio and I'll set you up with a free 15 minute consultation with me so you can get onboarded with the team and get your actual credit report restored. All right. And it also comes with a lot more perks, too. But 
Again, I just wanted to give you the step-by-step -step tutorial because I wanted to show you that, again, you can do this yourself. It's not, it's, it's not rocket science, I promise you. You just have to stay militant and stay diligent, all right? But I'm curious to know what you guys think. Have you tried to use this before? Have you not? Has it worked for you? Has it not? Um, if it hasn't, again, click the link in my bio so you can get started on the program so I can help you get everything removed. I really appreciate you guys for stopping by. Now go get those charge-offs removed, all right? <laughs> and until next time, ladies and gents.